So, you finally realized that your job isn't going to be around forever. Is it because the current pandemic has left you more vulnerable, more expendable? I'm sorry to say, that's always been the case anyway. It's nothing personal, but companies are going to do what they need to do to survive, and you need to do the same. Is it because you've found this COVID season more fruitful by being a seller on Instagram? Great, let's see if we can take your side hustle front and center. Or is it because you think your career has run its course? Whether you're up for retirement soon or you're simply stuck at a dead-end job, your career in employment does eventually run its full course. Hey everyone, so today I wanted to share with you how you can start preparing for your career outside employment. In my last video, I shared with you how I got out of my 9 to 5 and moved to paradise. But this time, I wanted to share with you what were the things I considered, what were the different phases and stages that I went through before eventually calling it quits. What were the things that I did and what were the things I continued to ponder about? And once I knew, how did I time my exit? These are what I'll share with you today. So here we go. Last time, we talked about how I escaped my 9 to 5. This time, we're going to be talking about you, how you can escape your 9 to 5. But before then, I want to thank everyone who gave their show of support, who congratulated me, or who just watched my video. And before we talk about your escape from your 9 to 5, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Is that good? Is that good for first time? Again, congratulations. You finally figured out that your job isn't going to be around forever. And for those skeptics about being in business for themselves, I hate to break it to you, but whether you like it or not, you're going to be in business sooner or later. Sure, you can retire, get a pension, and do nothing for the rest of your life. But doing nothing for the rest of your life, that's actually just reserved for top-level executives, C-level executives, the creme de la creme. So unless your corporate career is that great, chances are you're going to have to be doing something even after you retire. And I think the sooner that you can get started on doing business, the better. The sooner that you can start that side hustle, that side project, the better. Like anything, business seems to be something that we get better at the more we practice. I'm a firm believer that the best way to get started on a business is by doing it as a side hustle. You can control your risk and you can calculate your moves. So what side hustle can you get started on? On my end, it was Airbnb in my condo, but that's because I just couldn't pay for it anymore it's through my salary alone. It can be designing websites, it could be driving for people. Start trip, ma'am. It could be driving cargo, it can be cooking. Wow. It can be buying and selling. And the great thing about this whole COVID season, the one good thing about it is we saw how many things that you can actually sell out there and there's going to be people who want to buy it. It can be a small franchise business that you can put up with friends or trusted contacts. Because of the internet, there are so many side hustles, side businesses that you can find and they're just out there for you to select. Whatever it is, the most important thing is just to get started. You may like it, you may not. And what's important is you start weeding out those things that you don't want to get into so you already know the business that you want to do for yourself. As for myself, I liked home decorating and I like connecting with new people online which made Airbnb a business that I really enjoyed. Now that you've gotten yourself into the groove, and your side hustle is starting to show some real results, it's time to see if you can multiply your success. The key here would be scalability. Perhaps growing your side hustle while you're employed is a big challenge. But growing your side hustle 
while you're still employed is exactly how you graduate that side hustle into a real business. You do it with and through other people, and this is where it starts to get really interesting. In my case, I looked for ways how I can add more Airbnb units by finding a partner to help me manage and take care of things on the ground while I was still at work. If you're selling cookies, baked goods, and other treats, you can expand by finding distributors, resellers, and other areas that you're currently not servicing. If you're driving people or cargo around, you can find ways to make full use of your vehicle by having other drivers use it for the time that you're not personally driving it yourself. Once things have picked up and are really good, you can even look to expand your fleet and partner with other networks of drivers. I'm not gonna lie, this part's actually gonna be a hard part of the business. Ultimately, this part of the process lays down the foundation on how big you can eventually grow your business. Okay, so now you've found a way to grow your business. You think you can even grow further. And at this point, you can probably start seeing if it's worthwhile to leave your job. This is where you can start assessing how you can even grow further by leaving your job, but also considering the opportunity cost that, of course, you will be leaving behind. Are you really able to grow your business further by leaving what you have behind? Is it worthwhile? These are the tough questions that you're going to be facing at this stage. What kind of sales and what kind of bottom line should you be netting from your business? That's actually all relative. This is the part that you might be mulling over for a while. A lot of people think that it should be a amount that they should be looking at. Maybe it's 5 million pesos, maybe it's 10 million pesos. But as for myself, I don't think that it's such a great idea. I think if your stay in corporate is dependent on how much you save and how much you have in the bank, then you end up staying there even much longer. While in corporate, you're gonna get promoted, you're gonna get a higher salary, even with your business on the side. So you're going to get a bigger house, a nicer car. Basically, you're gonna end up with a more expensive lifestyle and that amount you're looking at until you're stuck in a cycle that you're just never really meeting that amount that you were looking at. Instead, what you should be working with would be the net earnings that you're actually getting from the business. Now, what I did to prepare myself for my eventual exit was that I started comparing what I was getting from my business and what I was getting as my salary. When I got to the point that my business was paying me pretty much the same amount of my salary after taxes, that's when I started thinking, I could really be doing this business full-time instead. Of course, up to this point, my business just slowly grew and I was getting comfortable and basically I had two incomes. So at this time, maybe I was a little spoiled. Maybe I was a little bit more loose in my spending. But when I realized that the real direction was for me to move on from my job into my business, I made a drastic decision to only spend and work with the net earnings that I was getting from my business. It took a lot of balls and a lot of discipline to actually not touch my salary. So basically, every month, my salary would come in and I would completely just neglect it and focus on what I was getting from the business itself. Start, it was a common pool. My salary, my net earnings, put them together and I just deduct the business earnings and that's what I would use for the month. Eventually, when I got the hang of that, I made sure that I was just really touching the cash flow that was coming from the business. So it was no longer a full sum game, it was really the cash flow as it happened. I proved to myself that I could already live off the business, but I wasn't convinced. I wanted to go further, I wanted to try it more. Of course, if I was going to be living off it, I needed to have savings as well. So cutting back further, my budget was now my business expense minus savings that I wanted and basically a smaller workable budget that I have more or less been working with all this time. I did this process for about a year and a half. So you can imagine that in this entire time, my commitment to myself was that I wouldn't touch my salary. So that's actually just stayed there, stayed in a mutual fund, and I kept it there, no questions asked, and not having touched my salary for a good 18 months, 
those savings remain as rainy day funds and actually that's what I've been living off of since the pandemic started because as I've said tourism is hard now businesses are slow so ultimately those funds that I didn't touch became my rainy day savings it would have been capital in another business but since it's just there then it's something that unfortunately I'm having to live off of now but better than not having it at all I basically simulated what it would be like to live off the business alone and once I proved that to myself once I saw that I could do it I could pay my mortgage I could pay my expenses and I still had savings I saw that I could already do this I could already leave my job and I think that's the timing that I was looking for and I think that's what you can do too not only did it give me confidence but because of slowly realizing that sorry to say but the job started becoming more irrelevant because you start seeing yourself standing on your own two feet that you can do things without having to depend on a salary and for me that was the biggest lesson that was the biggest turning point for me to know I should do this now while I have the momentum to grow my business. I can't speak for others, but this is how I approached the process of my leaving my 9-to-5 job. I simulated it and I tested it and it gave me that confidence to know I was ready. And again, I could only speak for myself. This was my approach. I think others have done it in a bolder and even braver way. Others have jumped into it. But like I said, I'm like you. I'm a little risk averse. People have said I'm brave, but I've actually just calculated my risks. I know what I'm getting into. Before I completely dove into the ocean, I tested the waters. I made sure that I could swim through it. Lastly, my approach was mostly about the money side and how would you be preparing but actually being in business for yourself more than the money side is really time for yourself is really time to be able to try different things and really if you find that thing that you love even if probably haven't gone through the same testing simulation that I went through but if you feel confident you feel like you love it as long as you're willing to make the sacrifices, as long as you're willing to cut down and scale back on your expenses, then I think even before you go through all this process, then maybe you could pursue it. But again, how I did it was different. That's what I'm recommending. And if you are a regular Joe like me, I think that's what, what would work. So, so thank you everyone. I hope that this has been worth your while. Like I mentioned in, in my past video, I'm happy to talk more about finances, about the mindset that I took in, that I would like you to take in when you go into business. Don't forget, everyone needs to be in business for themselves sooner or later. And the most important thing you can handle is the business of yourself. The business of taking care of your finances and looking after what you need to be able to do. Not just be able to afford things, but to actually live and be happy. I hope I see you next time.